Hello everyone and welcome back to Mixbus TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. I'm your host David and many of you guys asked me to show you the processing for kick and snare of one of my mixes, a mix I used for previous videos which was a song called Mess by the band Colors Void. So in this video we'll take a look at the processing for kick and snare, that mix, parallel channels and drum bus. Let's have a listen to the mix first, then we'll break down the processing for kick and snare. There are several things going on on both. Here we go. So even with all my hardware missing, let's listen to the drum by itself, all the channels open as they are in the mix. Okay, so in this video we're gonna take a look at the processing for kick and snare, but obviously take into account that all the tracks, all the drum tracks contribute to the sound, overhead, room mono, stereo room, everything. But yeah, kick and snare is what we're going to look at today. So channels first, we have a kick in, a kick out, and a kick dist, which stays for distortion. Let's listen to the kick in. Nothing on the single channels. Kick out by itself. With the kick in. This is the kick distorted, was recorded this way. Let me turn the volume up. All the three together. So nothing on the single channels, these three kicks go to my kick sum bus, which is an aux track where all the three mics are summed. Again, nothing on the single channels. Let's take a look at the processing on the kick sum. I have a gate first. Let's bypass everything first. All right, so this would be without anything. A lot of bleed. So, gate first, make the kick tight, and I like the sound of the soft tube uh, dynamite. 
Second is SSL channel for the first filters and EQ. You can see a little bit of top end. Um, see this? This is one of my favorite low boost. The frequency on the G channel is divided by three with this switch engaged. And I'm boosting, oh, well, 7 dB is at, I don't know, very low. <laughs> uh, shelf, another 2 dB here, and some top end in the higher band, high pass filter, and this is how it sounds without. And with. A little bit more bottom, a little bit more top, and a little bit of compression, you can see, about 3 dB. After that, EQ, taking out stuff at 500 and 400 with a wider bell, another little bit of top end, and reshaping the low end here. So taking out what I don't need up to 26K, and this is, you know, probably was just a mistake, 0.05 dB, don't, don't look at that, without. Listen how it clears up this cut here in the mid 400, 500 hertz. It clears up and, and makes the, the kick more intelligible. Okay, I had a pull tech here, but it was in bypass. I wasn't, I wasn't using it. Next one in line is the lo-fi. I love this on kick. Just a 0 0.1 of distortion. That's it. That's enough. It's a matter of how hard you hit it. So without. With. Very subtle. Just a little push. Then EQ again. And you will say, oh, why you did, why you use the Pro-Q2 first and then you, you EQ it again. Because as the mix evolves, you need to change things. And this EQ being uh, so far in the slots means I was mixing and, you know, the kick needed, in this case, a little more bottom end and again, a little more top end. And that's why, again, staging is so important because as the mix goes on, you need to add shit, especially on kick and snare, which is what you usually start with. So you're a bit conservative at the beginning and as guitars and bass and vocals piles up, you need to add a little top, a little bottom, and that's why you need a good gain staging to begin with. But yeah, without. With. See this cut here at 96? This is probably where the bass needed space and I, I needed to cut it from the kick. And last is a limiter. Uh, doing nothing. Really. Just, you know, to be safe. Because these three kick tracks are the original recording. I didn't use samples at all for the kick, okay? Now as I go on showing you the processing, we'll see the drum bus, obviously, but the kick and the snare before going to the drum bus they go to my crush distro i call it this way because i usually have a distressor here mono aux where i crush kick and snare the mono the mono tracks i don't have my hardware here i don't have my distressor so i'm giving you two plugins option let's solo this channel one is the cla 76 I want snap and, you know, crush from this channel. It's in parallel, so the level is not that high. Alternative is the soft tube dynamite. Which is a little more pointy. The distressor really is a combination of these two. Has the grit of the CLA and the snap of the soft tube. None of them is a substitute, but just, you know, for now, let's turn this with the kick. 
without. A little more snappy. Okay, so like I said, I usually have my distressor here. I don't have it now. So these two plugins can work somehow the same. And uh, let's go on. Let's see the snare. So we've seen the kick. That's it for the kick. Like I said, no samples. And we've seen the processing. The snare, I have a snare top. Original recording. Snare bottom. I added two samples. Let me solo them. And a room sample. So we have four snares. Let's listen to them all together. Nothing on the single channels, just gain staging as you can see. Nothing. Nothing, just gain staging. On this one, on the bottom, I have some EQ. You can see I'm taking out the top end, I'm, I'm boosting something around 2K, and I'm taking out at 500. All these snares go to my snare sum. Aux stereo channel. In here I have SSL. Nothing really major. 1 dB here, cut at 1K. 1 dB here of boost of 5, 6K. And a little bit of low pass filter. Main EQ is API without with then I have this transient designer here but I tried it and I didn't use it you can see the settings not doing anything it is just open there as for saturation I have the K clip clipping quite a bit 8 dB tube mode so I want a color here. I wanted the, the, the color from, from the K-clip without. And as usual, look at the nominal level without the K-clip, with the K-clip. Transient is not that tall with the K-Clip on. It's a little more roomy sound. It's a little more squash, a little more distorted. I wanted distortion here. And another saturator. My usual URS saturation in tape head 30, uh, which is what I always use on the snare. Without. With. See, I'm using it also for gain staging and I'm taking 3 dB down level-wise and my mix is a 40-something percent. Again, uh, to make it sit a little better without the two saturators. Level. Because of the ambient coming up, it... it it has more depth and we are gaining a, quite a lot of uh, nominal level. About 10 dB. Last EQ goes the same concept we, we, we talked about before for the kick as the mix evolves. You might need to adjust the tone at the last minute and that's why uh, you see EQ at, at last after all the processing. The snare goes to the crush distro channel Again, without, so this crush distro channels gets the kick and the snare mono. So let's solo the kick too, and let's 
mute and unmute that crush distro channel. With the dynamite instead. So you have a very strong mono, uh, a lot of attack in the mono channel, and uh, a little bit of ambient too, because, you know, it's crushed. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's take a look at the reverbs before looking at the drum bus. <laughs> 